Right guys, this is um our PCS3 and it's been driving me absolutely insane. So I've been making um a tutorial on how to set up launch box and I noticed half my PS3 ROM has actually disappeared so I'm like what the bloody hell is going on so I thought I'd reinstall it again. So I went through everything, didn't realise I didn't have my mic on, started the video again showed how to install the ROMs and stuff and then my controller wouldn't register this is what I've been trying to do so then I downloaded the new firmware installed that on our PCS3 controller wouldn't work still so I updated the firmware on the controller through USB still wouldn't register and every time I try to go back to an older firmware it says that firmware's the new one is still installed so I went through all the registry deleted everything to do PCS3 and it still said the firmware was there but now it seems to be working so I'm having to start all over again it's taking me like two hours Just, you know these little things that drive you absolutely insane so this is PlayStation 3 emulator it's not bad um, I think Xenia Canary is faster at running a lot of games that run on both systems so what we do first you have to install the firmware if you're installing the firmware I'd stick with 488 cause this is 49 no actually it's 488 now but it will still say I've got 490 on there so first of all you go to file install firmware and my firmware is in K ROMs BIOS. And it's a PUP file. See it I go to open. See old firmware detected a new version 4.90 is trying to install and it I went through everything on my registry and it still won't get rid of it. So just compiling modules. <laughs> I've I've set this one up quite a few times, but obviously you add different things. I've set up the light gun game to be slightly different now, as I've seen in the um, UI parts on the emulator. When you install games, there's two different versions of the games you can download. One is like the folder version where the exe is in the user directory and it's all eboot.bin and the other type of files you have are pkgs which are package files where you can install it to the virtual hard drive within rpcs3 so first of all I'll show you how actually I'm going to see if my pad works first I got out uh, I had DS4 now I was trying that earlier so now I've got to hold it down for 10 seconds then redo me pad right now if I go to pads dual sense yay it's working thank god for that I'll show you how to set this up later so first of all we're going to add games uh, first of all we're going to do the um, folder games which mine are in K ROMs and these are my normal ones before you had to put them all in individually now you can just select on where you store them select folder and now all your games are here and now we will install the PKGs which is here package wraps and edits wraps are like a virtual CD key of the game you normally you got like two of them you got the PKG and the wrap file 
So I'm going to do them all in one time. Get to open. And then install. What I'm going to do, because this is going to take probably 20 minutes, I'm going to pause the, the video, then I'll get back to you when the games are installed. Right, now all my games are installed. Not all the ones I had before, but most of them. Now we can patch it. If you notice here, updates available. I've got all the updates backed up on my PC, so I go to file, it's all packaged in wraps again, ROMs, and I got my patches here. And again, you just highlight the first one, hold down shift, and push the button on your mouse and it highlights them all. You can do them all at once. And these are all the patches. I think there's a couple I'm missing but I can get them at a later date. And I'll pause it again because this will take a while to patch. Right, now that's all set up. You can see most of my patches are done. There's a couple that isn't. But pretty much all of them are done. So obviously I've got my pad working now. If you've got um, a dual, like a normal um, X input one, all you have to do is click on these buttons, oh, then push the corresponding button on your gamepad. Then you can actually add profile, default, so you can save different profiles per game and after that what you do is save right so now we're going to go into the config well what I'll show you first actually if for instance Ace Combat Infinity if you right click this you can actually check game compatibility this will link to the website click on Ace Combat Infinity and it will tell you if you need any special configuration which here it says it doesn't so we'll pick one that does for instance um let's go red dead redemption so right click check game compatibility click on the name and it will tell you block size mega TSX instruction disabled and daily thing disabled said codes relaxed so it tells you what the best configuration for the game is so first of all what we'll do we'll set it up how you'd set it up normally then you can do per game configuration and I'll show you how to do that in a second so we go to GPU I'm going to stay as Vulcan because that's the fastest option you've got aspect ratio um, frame limiter I've never used that never needed to use it filtering I'm going to have it up. most of my games running at 4k so you're not going to need a lot if you're running at 1080p then I would add more I'm going to keep dead codes the same shader quality the same I'm not going to bother with 3D and a graph side by side or under and over I've got some um, 3D glasses somewhere but I can't remember where they are right I'm going to stick this up to 1440p this would just be the average resolution T560 by 1440p this is the actual internal resolution the game will be displayed at we have got um, Fidelity FX super resolution which does help a bit with the sharpness at least 
resolution scale, we're not going to worry about that at the moment. Some games need it. I'm going to have right color buffers because a lot of them actually do need it. So I'm going to keep these the same. I might check, but I'll probably change it per game settings. Audio. Well, audio is always miles too loud on this emulator, so um, you can turn it down, but I can't remember where. We have my audio devices normal, high definition audio, and go to apply. Ah, master volume, here we are. I'm going to cut that down by half. apply IO so with the IO this has actually changed slightly so for this is just going to be a guess at the moment sort of for um, games that like use the um, move so I'm going to have mouse handler as basic move handler as fake this is setting up for like um time crisis games camera psi camera handler fake we didn't have this before camera obs oh that's probably to record camera flip so i got move handler mouse psi camera handler fake not sure what these are at the moment these are new as well guitar hero and that so i'm going to apply this at the moment that should work with the normal emulation of the ps move i can keep this all the same network I've never really tried to play online, so you have loads of different options in here, um, like your library file, some games need different ones more than that, so, but I'm going to keep, keep it all the same at the moment, right colour buffers, sometimes these help on certain games. So we're gonna gonna keep it all the same at the moment. Emulator. Um, there's one here. Ignore double click for white for a full screen. Because if you're playing a game like Time Crisis, when you're firing like hell, if you do it too quick, then it will keep um going to full screen and then to window mode. So disable that one. And I'm going to apply and save. Right now we're going to go into the um, per game configuration. So you just right click, and the first thing we're going to do is do patches. Manage game patches here. New patches are available. Do you want to update? Click yes. Your patch file is now up to date apply save so in a lot of game you, games you do have patches to make them look better run better and stuff like that so if we go on to motorstorm 3d rift go to manage game patches ah nothing there so right we'll try that try the next one down Manage game patches. Oh, piss off. So here we go. On this game, you have patches, and most of these do actually really help the game. And if you highlight it, it takes you down here. Loads for the user resolution scaling in this title must be used with. 
disable dynamic resolution scale patch for proper upscaling. So I'm disable motion blur because I hate that. Disable SSAO, disable intro. Right, unlock frames per second. You'll find if you don't get 60 frames per second, sometimes when you unlock it, you'll get less frames. And disable dynamic resolution scaling. Then go to apply and save. Right now, what we'll do right click, go to create custom resolution or custom settings. Actually, we'll go to check game compatibility. So we want SPU block is mega. So create custom configuration and take these with a grain of salt because sometimes it doesn't work. Like SPU block size mega. Dead codes relaxed. These do actually that does actually work and does improve performance. So that's in GPU. Z code accuracy relaxed. Resolution scale threshold. So sometimes when you upscale, you get little glitches in the graphics. So you want 256 by 256, which is this one. And you can just use the back arrows. T56 by T56. Then we'll check again. If you want right color buffers on. Which I've already got on, right color buffers. Sleep time accuracy as host. And that's in advanced. Sleep time accuracy as host. And I'm gonna put up, I'm gonna try up 4K to start with. If it's too slow, then we'll reduce the resolution then try it that way and save custom configuration and normally it will take priority but there's always the option to boot with global configuration or boot with custom configuration let's see the controller on oh, I can't wait to try to ask them mess me about again Oh, come on, you dick. Right, hold down the button for 10 seconds. I'm driving me nuts this controller today. Right, thank you. So we just make sure it's working. Yeah, save. And it's gone off. My battery can't be dead already. No, it's at 75%. Stupid twatty thing. I keep saying it so far. Right, stay connected. It does take a while to compile. Or it takes longer the first time and it's quicker you know, each time after that. When it's compiled the shaders, it'll be even quicker. I 
And it's like I said, configuration of grain of salt because I know half the time it doesn't blood out. It's a case of trying different things and pretty much see if it does work. And I've noticed with this emulator, sometimes you can install it and run really quick. Next time you get fresh install, it runs really quick. Go compiling shaders. Oh, enter for full screen. I'll just stick on MSI. See what frames per second we're getting. And I did forget to do one thing actually guys, so just sit alright, it's exit in a minute. So what you need to do go back to change custom configuration and to get if you have um a higher frame rate that you want to get to uh where is it to you have um V blank. So sixty is actually thirty hertz. 120 would be 60 frames per second. Click apply. Save custom resolution. This time, it, there you go, it's a lot quicker this time loading. Oh, pardon me. also add reshade to this game um, even sometimes RTX global illumination works even though pe people say oh it's not RTX it sort of is but sort of in it still traces the rays that you know where they're supposed to bounce on the screen and stuff but it can't do the whole screen because it can't see everything not like it can with proper RTX it's just an in inaccurate version of it. <sighs> Come on. See, I think this game was actually um, when it was produced. I think I think it was thirty frames per second games.
Whoa. <laughs> okay, that's that one, dumb guys. Right, so that's Mate Storm Apocalypse done. Ah, I've got two of them, look. Eight, four, and... Right, so let's do an, another one. Army of Two, this was always a bit dodgy, because it, sometimes it would crash at the title screen. So we're going to have a go at that one, so I'm going to right-click. Check the patches first. Um, if I can see it, I'm going to blind delally when you stand on a computer screen most of the day manage game patches there you go right nothing there so apply save right right click check game compatibility army of two <laughs> right color buffers on that's all it needs which it already has. I'm going to right click, create custom graphics. I'm going to put this one up to 4K because I know it runs really well. Right color buffers. It's like sometimes insidious texture streaming, this can actually improve performance quite a lot in games. And Oh, we're mostly sweat. RSX as well can improve, but may cause slow down. It does tell you at the bottom in weaker situations. But I'm going to put this one on 16 because this is an easy game to run. <laughs> Broken, keep it the same. 4K, and then if you go to advanced. Oh, not to ever wake up. Sometimes if you get a game to crash. If you in increase the driver wake up delay, it actually be more stable. Apply save custom resolution. Like I said, the video, you know, um, showing you well, these games run really pretty well. They're really good as well. This one. Like we bloody painted dry. Oh, nearly there. Oh, nearly there. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, I'm still dying. Uh, slowly. Might cut this bit out so you don't have to get bored waiting.
like on this one, if you haven't got white colour buffers on it, it's really, really bright. Um, a bit quick, so because I made it too fast, go back in the custom, change custom configuration, advance, and put that down to sit back down to 60. Fly, save configuration. I don't know if it does it on the fly, but we will see. Uh, that's better. change the thing in between I don't know so we'll go back change customer configuration CPU 16 times disabled turn off multi thread could have some things to do with it you can have quite often I've used this one it will um, put in a shader um, approximate one before it actually compiles the proper one which has helped me before this job I'm um, game is crashing so I'm going to click on that one keep it at 4k audio advance keep that the same apply precise that should be okay apply save con custom configuration so we'll try again. This time it will be a lot quicker loading. Because shader compiling can cause issues with the game. But once it's all compiled, you can go back to the normal ones then.
try a thing the same. Alright, listen up. This is combat. You can die in combat. If you don't want to die, you have to use aggro. This is you. This is your partner. And this is your mum. These are enemies. You shoot at them, attract their attention, they're gonna shoot at you, not your partner. Let's say you both shoot at them. If your partner has a bigger gun, the enemy will shoot at him instead of you. This is called aggro. If your partner has all the aggro, you're basically invisible. You can sneak around enemies, do whatever you want. But if you have the aggro, it's like you're glowing red. You even have a field aggro meter. Now go out there and kick some ass! guys yeah. how to run that one right now we'll test uh, see <coughs> <coughs> if I've set up um, time crisis raising the storm this one will take a while to compile the modules because it starts it stops it resets it and then it loads the game. It's a bit weird how it does it. Press that game mode, then it will go off, and you think, oh, it's crashed, but then it comes back on. Crisis raising storm. Right. Let's say no, it's not doing that at the moment. So right, I'll figure it out.
Right, guys. To set up Time of Crisis Raising the Storm, um, a lot of people will have trouble with Time Crisis 4 because it's really laggy and really buggy, even at 60 frames per second. So, I'll show you how to set it up with the PlayStation Move where you can use your mouse. So, if you right click, go to Change Custom Configuration. Right, I've got Recompiler, Recompiler no problem. Enable SPU loop detection. Size Mega, preferred SPU threads normal. GPU. I'm going to turn this up a bit. Anti-aliasing on auto. The main thing here is frame limit. If you have it at 60, then it will lag like hell because the game is actually trying to force itself to run higher than 60 even though it wasn't designed to run higher than 60. Even with um, V-Sync on, it still tries to overcompensate so it causes too much lag to the system. But if you put it down to 50 frames per second, it will still feel exactly the same but it's a damn sight smoother. I'll show you before what it is like on 60 frames per second. Now I'll show you how to calibrate it in that in a second. I'll just show you quickly what it's like beforehand. Because you have to calibrate the actual configuration for the light gun in window mode. Otherwise, you can't see a crosshair. My crosshair is just my mouse. Time crisis. Raising store. You can, you can play um, Raising Storm on 60. This one. So I'll just do it really quick, quickly. So. Mm. Time Crisis 4 Now we can go to full screen And you get mouse lag, we have a new mission, game lag, gentlemen. input lag. A top secret weapon is about to fall I'm pretty much really every single lag you can think of. Leg lag, ass lag. It's right on the cutscenes. So I'm getting a steady 60 frame per second with hardly any frame pacing issues. You can see the lag already. Action. And I'm trying to fire. Oh. Giorgio, Evan, can you hear me? So, what you need There's to been do. There's an information leak regarding your involvement. I right, shut this down. So, right click. Custom configuration. And just quickly flick through the screens. So, put this down to 50, guys. And it'll be so so much better even with me sync on at 60 it's still it says computer says no but we're we're not allowed to watch that anymore politically incorrect like right, your io i got it slightly wrong earlier because i had mouse handle on fake it has to be on mouse mouse handler basic Single threaded camera handler is fake, camera input is PSI. Advanced network exactly the same. So 
that's it. That's all you need. Apply, same clothes. The hardest thing is the configuration because you still have to have your pad on because you have to flick through the menus in the game with your pad and I'll go through it with you in a second right, save load game you have to have it windowed because as you can see your mouse disappears and you have to set it up with your mouse it should automatically come up time right. crisis raising store so you can hit hit your mouse or controller button so you can flick through the games so well, time crisis 4 because raising storm works perfectly well without cutting down the frames per second So you get to the configuration screen. All you do is press right mouse, right mouse, right mouse, right mouse, and just hit it. The crosshair in the center. So now you're here. So you have to hold down the right mouse button and push the middle mouse. And when you're on this screen, you push the circle on your PlayStation controller or it will be um, B button on the Xbox and that exits Time crisis. now you hit Four. your right mouse button you can do it either way doesn't really matter then hit the right mouse button then hit the right mouse button again Right, as you notice at the top of the screen it says wireless controller. So you want to get your controller and go up, push the X button, then push the button on your mouse and it will change to motion control. Then go down to game start and you can even press your mouse or button on the controller. I'll have to scribble in my description if I remember when I'm doing it. We have a new mission for you, gentlemen. A top secret weapon is about to fall into the hands of terrorists in the United States. Head there at once to investigate. Do you think they closed the airport for us? Hey. Think they blocked off the entire airport for us? Thanks for rolling out the red carpet, guys. Always got cheesy makeovers in these games. Let's do this. Action! Giorgio, Evan, can you hear me? There's been an information leak regarding your involvement. There are the terrorists involved in this incident. Return fire! Reload! Shotgun. Press the reload button and pull the trigger to switch weapon. Action! Good 
grenade. Handgun. So there you go, guys. That's how to play Time Crisis 4 without any lag. My right, last thing I'll show you before I go, guys, is you can have different patterns, you can have grid. And this one it wants to change back and kick. You can make them bigger, smaller, utilities, um, I haven't really played with this much. Um, one thing that you can run, which is okay but it doesn't always bring up every single game. Um, on the PS3 obviously we got an interface and this is like a virtual interface of what the PS3 internal would actually look like. And when you first do it, it takes a long time to compile. But it won't have everything here. Is it, it have your, um, games that you have on the system like your internal hard drive games but your other ones it won't So you have quite a few here, all the ones that are on your internal storage, but I won't have all of them. So you can just get out of it normally, and then you can start the game as I um, showed you in the tutorial. Well, it's a bit long-winded, but hopefully it will explain a lot. And because I'm dyslexic anyway, so I've had quite a few comments saying that they find it easier to actually follow my tutorials because some people go, "Do this, do that," blah 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 blah, and you're like, "What the bloody hell is going on?" He even like, <laughs> like you know, I've been doing this for years, and it's like I watched some of them, and like, "Okay, you weirdo." Right, hope you enjoyed it guys. Cheers.